So in this video, we're going to connect graph theory and a basic principle of the ink pen plotter. Now, ink pen plotters still exist, I believe, and, and there are just so many models and variations in how they work. For example, here is one from 1983 by HP, which I found on their, on their website, the HP Museum. And this one was very popular, and it sold for almost $1,900. This ink pen, pen plotter has several pens and paper moving technology, which we're not going to get into too much detail about here. But the pens would move around and, and draw the image that you see here, and that's the basic principle of a pen plotter. So in our, in our, for our imaginary pen plotter, we assume that we have one pen. And there's no paper moving technology, but it's one pen that moves around and draws this image. And that'll give us a basic idea of, of how to generalize and make all of our ink pen plotters efficient. Because when this one pen moves around, let's say it wants to draw this shape right here. Kind of like a rectangle with two diagonals cutting across it. Well, when, when, our, pink, when, our, when, our, pink, when our ink plotter draws this shape, we should realize that here there are one, two, three, four vertices with an odd degree. They each have a degree of three. So when our pen, let's say it starts, I don't know, right here, when, when the pen starts here, it's going to try to draw these lines, we're going to run into a problem because we can't form a path or a circuit with four odd vertices. In other words, if we try to cover these lines, let's, let's just try it real quick and see what happens. Maybe we'll come down here, and then the pen comes this way. If it comes up here, and then over here, great, and then here. Well, to get to this line over here, what does the pen do? And what should it do? Well, we certainly don't want it to go from where we are now, which is right here, right? The pen sitting right here, and redraw, let's say, this line or any other line. If we redraw a line, we're wasting ink, we're changing the thickness of the line that's being drawn, and uh, we're wasting money. So the pen will have to lift up, as they do in ink pen plotters, lift up and move back here, perhaps, and then draw the rest of our line, or perhaps move up here and then draw the line in one stroke. And this is an issue because every time we lift up the pen, move it, and put it back down, so let's say we go from here to here, we're also using up time. So in order for a printer to be efficient, we want to think about and be very strategic about the path that the pen travels to draw the shape. So how do we do that? And, and what are some observations we can make? Well, again, let's assume, and I think I'm using the same starting point, let's assume we're starting here. So if the pen comes down here, and then over, and then up, back, and down. We have to get to this line. And the suggestion that I, I threw out there was that we move up from this vertice to this one. So the pen's going to lift up and move there, and then draw this line. So that's the way it's going to have to be done. And now, Let's just pretend that even though this edge right here that we drew in is not another line, let's pretend it is. It's an imaginary line. It's a line of a different type. It's that line where the pen will lift up. We should look at that because what that means is that if we count that as an edge, we change the degree of these two vertices right here. Instead of them both having a degree of 3, they now have a degree of, of what? Well, since we added one edge to each of them, instead of having a degree of 3, they each have now a degree of 4. So we change those two odd degree vertices to two even degree vertices. And overall, now the graph has a pair of odd vertices, which means, as you saw here, that, that it is possible to draw a path when there are only two odd vertices. So basically, the basic goal in, in, in our strategy here is that whatever shape our pen plotter is drawing, right? think of it in terms of its edges and vertices, and then cancel out each pair of odd degree vertices by drawing an edge between them. Now this multigraph here does have two edges between these two vertices. And I did draw this edge as a curve, but that's not the path that our pen will follow. I'm just drawing that to show that there are two edges here. In fact, the pen should just go back straight up the way it came. So, so again, our goal is, no matter what your graph looks like, the first thing you want to do is connect pairs of odd vertices with edges. 
until there are only two odd vertices left. Until, uh, I guess I'll write it up here, two odd vertices remain. And remember, the reason we can actually leave those two last vertices odd is because we're only trying to form a path. And in a path, you can have two vertices of odd degree. That, that's Euler's idea. Um, if we wanted to create a circuit, we would have to keep connecting pairs of odd vertices with these, these imaginary lines with the pens lifting up until we have no odd vertices left. So the question is, well, how many, how many pairs will we have to connect in order for this to actually work? Well, when we had four odd vertices, it took one line to, to get rid of our odd vertices, or odd pair. So instead of looking at the number of odd vertices, let's look at the number of pairs of odd of odd vertices. And I think we'll see something here, and then we'll talk about a, a general way of viewing this. So let me just draw a little chart here. And when we have a number of pairs of odd vertices, and we're counting that, we want to know how many lines will it take to complete the drawing. So number of lines to form, we'll say, an, or, an, an Eulerian path. To form an Eulerian path. In other words, how many lines did it take to make it so the pen can actually draw this shape uh, by only lifting up uh, a certain amount of times, right? So, so when we had two pairs of vertices, of odd vertices, two pairs, choose this color, it took one line to form a path. And doesn't that make sense? If we have, I'm just going to draw the vertices here. If these are each odd vertices, right, we have two pairs, well, to get rid of one of the pairs of being an odd vertice, we connect them with one line. In other words, we change two of the vertices with one line. It'll, it'll only take one line, again, because we're trying to get rid of one of the pairs. We're, we're leaving that last pair, the start and the end. And in fact, it doesn't matter how many vertice, pairs of vertices we have. If I have another pair, so if I have three pairs of odd vertices, now it will take two lines. Right, two lines, one for two of the pairs, and there's one pair left over, which is the start and end of our picture. And this goes on. If I had four pairs of line of odd vertices, I would take three lines to get rid of three pairs, and we'd leave that the start and end pair alone. And this goes on. So if you have n pairs, right, of odd vertices, it will always take n minus one lines to complete the Eulerian path. And we can you can even go further with this. We can generalize this algebraically. So again, so let's say a picture has two n odd degreed odd degree vertices. And, and that's just the way of saying, of course, where n is the number of pairs, two times the number of pairs is the number of odd degreed vertices. So for example, if you have one pair that's n, e, n of odd degree vertices, well then you have 2 times 1, which equals 2 odd degree vertices. If you have 2 pairs, where n equals 2, well then you have, well 2 pairs is the same as 2 times 2, or 4 odd vertices, and just one more. If I have 3 pairs of odd vertices, then I have 2 times 3, right? Because if you have 3 pairs, you have 6 odd degree vertices. So in this, in this case, we're looking at 2n odd degree vertices. Uh, we, we can say, well, then it'll only take n minus 1 imaginary lines or lines to complete the path. And this is a little bit different from what I was saying before. Before, I was saying, well, let n represent the number of pairs. I mean, I'm sorry. N was the number of pairs before, but now we're also looking at, I'm sorry, the number of odd degree vertices. So if N is the number of pairs, N minus, we'll need N minus one lines to complete the path, and there are two N odd degree vertices. So if there's one pair, or one N, there are two odd degree per vertices, and and we'll need no lines, or N minus one, to, to complete the path, because, well, that is a path. If there are two pairs, then there are four odd degree vertices, and we'll need one line um, to actually complete the path.
So, so anyway, I'm sorry. What this actually all boils down to is a simple, a simple equation that shows us that, yeah, um, the number of times we draw an imaginary line uh, is going to either equal n minus 1 or, or be larger than it. And we'll look at that right now. So let's, let's have a, a variable in here, which is k, and let it equal the number of times we pick up and drop our pen. So, so if we pick up and drop our pen once, k is 1. If we pick it up and drop it twice, k is 2. Um, and we, we know that if that's the number of, if we know the number of times we're picking up and dropping the pen, we can also use this to count the number of odd degree vertices. So if we pick the pen up once, well, working backwards, there are two vertices, start and an end, of the graph that we're not going to touch. We'll leave those as an odd pair, so start and end. That's two vertices. Plus, well, for every, every line we draw, Every number of time, every number, every time we pick up and, and drop our pen, there are two, right? Two odd vertices. So if we pick up our, our drop our pen once, that means that that's a pair of odd vertices that we're connecting. So it's two times the number of times we pick up our pen or drop our pen. That's the number of odd vertices. Now altogether, this is all the odd vertices in the graph, right? It's the two you start with, and every pair you connect. These are just the the pairs that we connect by picking up and dropping our pen. Now this could equal 2n. Now 2n is just what? Well, we said that before. That's the number of odd vertices in the graph. So odd vertices in the graph. So the two that we start with and all, all the pairs of odd vertices we connect should be the number, when we're being our most efficient, of odd vertices we have. So for example, with the four odd vertices we showed before, I'm just going to draw this is the original graph. What we did was we had to draw one line, so k is 1, to basically turn this odd pair of vertices to an even pair. So there are two, oops, we need this line too. There are two pairs of odd vertices, and we took one line to connect two of them. So there are the two here, the start and end, and the pair connected by one line. So 2 plus 2, or 4 odd vertices, and yes, that's equal to the number of odd vertices. But for some reason, um, let's say we had to actually make another pick up and put down of a pen for whatever reason, whether it's color or we need to actually make this line thicker, perhaps we have to do it again. We have to come back down here. Well, and then, I don't know, again, maybe we have to do it a bunch of times. For whatever reason, there's different colors. Uh, who knows? Well, it, whatever happens, right, that means that this number the start, the number of vertices that start and end the graph, and the number of times we have to pick up and put down our pen, it could equal the number of odd vertices in our graph, right? Because it's one, it's one pick up for each pair, and the two we start with, which is essentially all the pairs of odd vertices, or it could be bigger than it. So it'd be greater than or equal to, and that's just saying, well, if we need to draw in a bunch of extra lines, it might not correspond to all the pairs of odd vertices. They could correspond to even even vertices. It could be that we're drawing, we're picking up and, and putting down our pen many other times for other reasons, and that would mean that the number of times we're picking up and putting down the pen and the start and end vertices is greater than all the odd vertices in the graph. That could happen, and let's just continue with this and we'll see something kind of interesting, which is that when we set this equation up, 2k plus 2 is greater than 2n, if let's if we solve for k, right, we subtract 2 from both sides, and we get 2k is greater than or equal to 2n minus 2, and then divide both sides by 2, and we get k is always going to be bigger than or equal to n minus 1, which is what we said before, right? The number of times you're going to have to pick up your pen is always going to be 1 less than the number of pairs of odd vertices, which makes sense, because if you have, let's say, 3 pairs of odd vertices. Well, we're going to need only two lines to connect these odd vertices and turn those into even because we're not touching the third pair. So that's, I hope I didn't talk us in a circle here, but I wanted to show the algebraic uh, equation that supports this idea. In the next video, well, in the next video we'll look at an example of how this actually pans out. And I think you'll see the idea of this, oops, might not be as, as 
model as my explanation of this algebra, but I hope it helped a little bit.